Okay, in this problem, we're given a function f of x, y is equal to x cubed plus y cubed minus 3a times x minus 3b times y. And we want to find conditions in which a and b um, allow f to produce at least one degenerate critical point, maybe more. So first we want to look at when f has critical points. So we know that f has critical points when the gradient vector is equal to zero or undefined. Um, so let's look at the gradient vector of f with respect to x or at x, y. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x is 3x squared minus 3a. And the partial derivative of f with respect to y is 3y squared minus 3b. So we want both of these components to be equal to 0. So setting the, x, the first component equal to 0. We see that x squared is equal to a. or x is equal to plus or minus the square root of a. And similarly, we see that y squared is equal to b by setting the, sec the second component equal to 0. And solving for y, we get that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of b. OK, and so these are where f attains a critical point, but we want critical points to be degenerate. So in order for a critical point to be degenerate, that means that the Hessian matrix, uh, the determinant of the Hessian matrix is equal to 0. So let's find the components of the Hessian matrix, which are the partial derivatives, or the second partial derivatives of f. So we'll take the partial derivative of f sub x with respect to x, we get 6x. And the partial derivative of f with respect to y is equal to 0, or the partial derivative of, of a the partial derivative of f sub x with respect to y is equal to 0. And similarly, the partial derivative of f sub y with respect to x is also 0. And then finally, the partial derivative of f sub y, the second component, with respect to y is 6y. OK, so we want the determinant of the Hessian matrix to be equal to 0. So we can just write that down as. f sub x x times f sub y y minus f sub x y squared. So we get 6 times 6 is 36, x y minus 0. And we want that to be equal to 0. Uh, but we know from before that the critical points occur when x is equal to plus or minus a and y is equal to plus or minus b. The square x is equal to plus or minus the square root of a, and y is equal to plus or minus the square root of b. So we can plug that in. So we get thirty-six times the square root of a times b is equal to zero. So this only occurs when either a equals zero. or b equals 0, or both. So if we look at when a is equal to 0, that means that x is equal to 0.
and we have our f sub x y is going to be equal to, or well, I guess that that just kind of defines when um, that defines that critical point. If a is equal to zero, then x is equal to zero. B could be anything. And then y would be equal to plus or minus the square root of k. Now, similarly, if a is not equal to zero, then we'll set a equal to, we'll call this one k1. And if A is non-zero, then that means that B has to be equal to zero, which means that Y is equal to zero. And finally, our third case is when A equals zero, then X is equal to zero and Y is equal to zero. So if we notice that if one of our A or B is non-zero, then we have two critical points that are both non or that are both degenerate, and they occur at the plus or minus the, when plus or minus the square root of the non-zero term, um, and then zero as the other term for y or x. And then if both A and B are equal to zero, then we have just one critical point. That's non or that's degenerate, and that occurs at the origin when x and y are both equal to zero. So we have either two degenerate critical points or one degenerate critical point.